In this final section, we will take a closer look to collective communication. MPI includes several communication patterns for collective communication. The first pattern of interest is broadcasting. This is the case where one process will send a message to every other processes inside the communicator. A second pattern of interest is scatter. In this case, one process will split its message into several parts and send individual parts to different processes. A pattern related to scatter is gather. It is the inverse process of scatter, where different portions of a message are put back together from several processes. An extension to gather is the MPI all gather, where the gathering process is done for all processes. In this mode, each process ends up with the overall information. MPI also includes collective communication methods to merge values from several processes. For example, the function MPI reduce reduces several values to a single value. The function will apply a reduce operation. In this example, the reduce operation is MPI sum, which simply sums all values into a single value sent back to the process zero. Many other reduce operations can be applied, including min, max, product, the logical end, etc. To illustrate how to use collective communication patterns, we will proceed with the example of computing pi. There are many algorithms to compute pi. In this example, we will use the following approximation using a summation. As we will increase delta x in this formula, we will get closer and closer to the real value of pi. As you can imagine, as we increase the number of steps in this computation, the longer it will take to be computed, especially in a serial manner. In such a case, it is possible to split the summation over multiple processes to accelerate the computation. So first, let's compute pi in a serial manner. This will be done by simply looping over the number of steps and updating the summation result each step. Finally, we evaluate pi. We also evaluate the computation time and report it at the end. So let's look how long it takes to compute 100 million steps. In this case, it took about 30 seconds to compute on an interactive node on S star. Now, let's build our MPI version. As usual, we first collect information about the MPI COM world to retrieve the rank and size of each process. We also evaluate the number of steps that will be handled by each process and compute the start and end boundaries. Then, each process will compute its section of pi in the for loop. The main difference here with the serial version is that the loop will become smaller and smaller as we add processes. This is a classic divide and conquer method common in computer science. Finally, for this function, we return the partial sum. What remains to be done is the main function. Here, we make use of the MPI reduce function. In there, we will execute the function that we just defined in the previous slide with all available processes and apply the reduce operation sum. Once everything is complete, we will print the result. And that's it. Let's now execute this code to see if it's faster than our previous test. And, indeed, while splitting over 14 processes, it took only about 6 seconds.